tonight. Backs were broken, metas were saved, and we're one step closer to the cure. Plus, we have a really special guest in the studio, so stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz Yes. Yes. Now, we had to break out Barney tonight. That's you. Killer Frost style. This would have to be the one she was bumping. This would be a oh. Killer Frost oh, no. list. <laughs> what oh, is up, oh, guys? Oh. We are back for another episode of The Flash, episode five, or episode 11, season five, Seeing Red. I am your girl, Drew Jones. I could not do this without my amazing panel. So you guys introduce yourselves. Hey, y'all. It's Chauncey K. Robinson. What's going on? It's Jamie Alexander. Hey, guys. It's Zach Silverman here. And you guys in the studio. We have Drum Rocky Rome. and Man himself. Barney. <laughs> Barney. Barney. <laughs> Barney Sawyer. We are so happy to have you in the studio. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. You for having me. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah. We have so much to talk about tonight. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about the episode. We're going to get into it with Hartley. So make sure to send in some fan questions if you have yes. any. And as always, Chanti is going to kill it with the news and gossip. Um, so first impressions, you know, initial thoughts of tonight's episode, go. I really loved it. <laughs> um, I was like very tensed up, you know, because you never know what's going to happen. A lot of times we see all these wild things happen that we don't know are going to happen. And I just didn't know what was going to happen. And I get really scared when people start getting beat on. So um, my adrenaline was up. I was excited to watch. My eyes were glued, you know, so it was a, it was exciting and adventurous. I enjoyed this episode. OK, I liked the episode. Just saying I liked it. I think it was kind of a recycle of a uh, prior episode, but still good acting, still good story. Which episode? Somewhere in season two. I mean, they even, they referenced it right to uh, uh, Cecile, you know, saying, like, we did this the last time to try and transfer metas. Mm. It's kind of the same thing, but, like, up their game factor with FBI, witness protection. I really enjoyed it. I thought, I mean, Barry was daddy in this episode. And, like, I don't want to say it in so many ways, but I was just, like, you know, in terms of, like, for Nora and just I really enjoyed that connection. We got to see some of the other characters shine um, in other aspects. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Can I just say I really like your character this season? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I like... think we all like him <laughs> yeah. a lot better than last season. Yeah. Yeah. We this is kind like, of how I always saw him anyway. Yeah. Was, you know, like we, had to start, we had to start him there to bring him here. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot I've, of fleshing him out, I think, yeah, last season. Yeah, he's just more grounded. I was going to say, we st he's still like goofy and like yeah. fun. Like, you know, we got the sister sister, <laughs> yeah. which was yeah. hilarious. Which is amazing. Right. But like, he he was great tonight, I thought. Which, like. thank you. I saw somebody comment on that. They were like, do we really believe that Ralph has ever even seen Sister Sister? Oh, who hasn't? That's an insult to Sister Sister. I think everyone has seen that. That's a universal show. Yeah. <laughs> Loved seen. by many. But like let, let's just hop right into it. Um we get into the episode and it's Cicada and it's time to go to work. He's been slacking. It's time to get these metas off the street. Um and he goes straight for Bork and what is the other one? Narvok? Narvok. Norvok. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um where like how are we feeling about this like hit list of metas and like where what it could possibly mean for Cicada? Because he seems like he's kind of run down a little bit. Is that just me? I feel Run like down. He seemed like it looks like he's getting more powerful. I think he's just more mad. No, but he's also like he started out this episode. He's he's hurting a lot. Like yeah. he's like, trying to heal and everything like that. But I feel like his reaction to that is to be way more aggressive. Yeah, and he was kind of on a killing spree at first, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of like an injured like possum or something right yeah. now. Like he's just he's like lashing out. He yeah, it was really intense. Like just his voice is getting more and more gravelly. Like as it goes yeah. on, it's like intensely more just like rugged and just has this whole thing of yeah. It was just really brutal in terms of like the opening. He's he's a straight up serial killer, and we saw that more in this episode. Yeah. And he's being egged on. She's like, you need to get back to work. Here's a list. I got people. We got meta to kill. We so he gets very layers egged on, the on by the nurse. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to get a little bit more background on the doctor? Do you know that? Or I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't actually know about that. Because she's, okay. she's an interesting character, for sure. I'm, I kind of want to see a we little bit more Yeah, we dig a little bit more. Yeah, we dig a little bit more into her at one point, I believe. But I can't remember how far in depth it goes. Um, I can't recall. We'll have to but what's her deal? You know, it's like, yeah, what's like, she's, she's Aggie. Just cheerleading this whole thing on. Like, yeah. It's like, okay, you get out there and do it. If you're so right. <laughs> exactly. She's just very aggressive. And I'm like, who hurt you? Like, yeah. what, what is happening here? Why are you so angry? Why are you yelling at him? I get why he's mad, but I don't know. But, um, 
Killer Frost and Caitlyn are kind of, you know, it wouldn't be an episode if they weren't beefing a little bit, <laughs> yeah. like, in a cute family-like way, but they're beefing over the cure. Um, anytime Killer Frost comes out, she's wrecking what Caitlyn has already seen. Um, what, were, what were your all's thoughts on Killer Frost and Caitlyn tonight? I really like their resolve. Like you said, it was it was like beef, but it was cute. Um, I like the way Killer Frost made it known that she doesn't want to go anywhere. And I love the way, you know, Ralph stepped in twice to really kind of drop that little seed into Killer Frost. Like, oh, but she wants you here. And, you know, uh, the, also making her a little bit compassionate. Like, well, you're scared too. You know, just appealing to her soft side. So I think Ralph's character really helped her get to um, a decision where she could actually bend and understand where Caitlyn was coming from. So I, I liked it. Now, a lot of people in the chat and on Twitter, obviously, I'm sure you've already heard, like, it's the are they, are they not huh. going to. I personally don't want Ralph I don't and want Caitlyn that. together. But what, like, how do you <laughs> feel? <laughs> why, why is everyone always trying to do that? I, I don't just, even I get like, that I'm like shipping well, it. Well, like, I know why at first last year people were like, okay, they're going to get together. Cause yeah. They always bring somebody in for Caitlyn and then yeah. kill them and that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Um, but that was never on the table. Like okay. I've I've seen people commenting saying, "Oh, they're going to do it. Why would they do that?" And I feel like it's like I don't know, 60, 40, 50, 50. It, it, like you take a sampling of people, they feel one way or the other. Yeah. It's kind of down the middle where people like want it. Some people want to see it happen. A lot of people don't want to see it happen. But we've never talked about that seriously. I mean, I think. I love the fact that they're friends, and I especially love yeah. that Ralph and like Ralph and Killer Frost get along quite well. Yeah. Like he's not thrown by her. I think he just understands where she comes from, and I think Caitlin was one of the first people who was like, you know, cared for Ralph when he first came in, and didn't just write him off as a jackass, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. and doesn't your character? He has like a true love in his in his comic books. Oh right? yeah, like, Sue. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I remember one time reading that like the showrunners were thinking about bringing her in. I mean, like like they said something about that last year, but it never seemed to come into fruition. That's Did you all, hear that all? Or? That's all been part of like a very very long term plan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we even talked about that the first month I was shooting. Mm. We talked about that and a few other things that are starting to happen now. Okay. I was cool. say, I wouldn't be mad at them like if it was like towards the end of the show, you yeah. know? But yeah. right now, I really like the friendship. I think it's solid. You mean Caitlin and Ralph getting yeah. together? I, would, I just don't ever see it happening. I don't like, I don't like. I don't want it to happen, but I would be okay <laughs> If they're going with to it, do it. it way, 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 way towards the end. Do you remember the episode of Friends where, like, uh, was it Joey and Rachel? Rachel? Uh, yeah. And, like, they, that, they, they were, like, exactly going to. Yeah. They were going to oh. kiss, and then they were, like, no, what are we doing? What are we, like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It would be like that. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yes. That's perfect. Thank yeah. you. That's perfect. Yeah. I am, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. There will be no Caitlin and Ralph. Hopefully, for them. Unless. That's right. <laughs> Unless dot, dot, dot. someone else decides. <laughs> um, so, Caitlin finds, you know, realizes she needs fresh meta, a uh, fresh made meta for her DNA, mm -hmm. or for their DNA to figure out, you know, how, how to reverse it yeah. and get it all together. Um, how did you guys feel about the end of the episode with um, Killer Frost, kind of the ball with the, the speck with the of blood? blood. That was kind of gross, but kind of like it was cute. Like, <laughs> like, kind of cool. I mean, I knew something was gonna happen with it when she like sliced him, and she kind of like looked on her blade and was like, "Oh, there's blood there." Like, yeah. I knew something was gonna come up with that. Mm. I didn't even notice that. So yeah, <laughs> I just thought she was excited that. for drawing blood. I didn't That's realize I, it was gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> she's well, just it's, a maniac. it's nice because it shows how they work uh, in tandem together, like hand in hand. Like they are one person, but split personality. Like they they care for each other and want to see good um, happen for both of them. So. If she were to just ignore it, I feel like it would just put a wall on the whole plot line of where we have to go with um, with uh, curing the cure. I like, you know, I think in this episode in particular, uh, Killer Frost really got to shine mm -hmm. a bit more because, mm -hmm. you know, there are Finally, times, by the yeah, way. and there are times <laughs> yeah. when like she's come in and it's been like a snarky reply, and then I even liked how they made it so when Barry came in, she's like, "I'll get Caitlyn," because yeah. she knew that he, yeah. she just kind of felt like she he's gonna send me away. No one likes to keep Killer Frost around, and she got to stay around, and it really just I really dug her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when she first was kind of more of the villain, and I dug her then, and then she kind of they kind of had this kind of Hulk plot line going on with Caitlyn and stuff. Don't get her angry. She's trying to kill Frost. And I like that there's this balance now, but more so, you know, KF gets to have a little bit more of a personality, some moments. Well, yeah, like I love I love that little moment where after she's, after Killer Frost talked to Norvok and she's like kind of fronting and she's trying to write everything off and, be like, and it's like, he knows that she's just afraid, you know? And the idea that Killer Frost is afraid of something, I think, 
just makes her a lot more accessible for us as viewers. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that a lot. The idea that she's just been terrified and, and not sure where she stands with Caitlin. And it's just all about that they, they love each other, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Barney, mm-hmm. I love yeah. you. <laughs> yes. yes. Exactly. On set, um, really quick, is Danielle any different when she's trying to get into Killer Frost mode? Or is she just the same as she would be playing Caitlin? You mean like when we're, when, obviously when we're not shooting yeah, that kind of thing? Yeah, when you're not shooting. Yeah. Like no, she's exactly the same. She just takes longer to, to get ready because there's so much going on with <laughs> yeah. all of that. But no, she's always, yeah, she's, she's an like extremely professional person. Like mm-hmm. she's, I've, I've known her for years and I've learned a lot from her working on this show. She's great. Nice. I nice. love it. So Ralph and um, XS and The Flash and Killer Frost head out to go and try to, you know, have some beef with Cicada, and he breaks Nora's entire back in oh a God. very heartbreaking that way. That was Great terrible. Nightfall, right um, I will say I kind of love the side of Barry and Iris, like the parenting aspect yes. of it. What did you guys think of that? Amazing. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. I loved seeing Iris go all mama bear, like, that's a lane that you don't go down. Or whatever yeah, with Sherlock, yeah, 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 yeah. I really love that, yeah. Yeah, that was really, that was, you know, that was the first, well, I think that was one of the first times we've seen her go there like that. Um, and then the same thing with Barry, like we've never seen him, uh, like they said, oh, we've never seen him, he's 280, whatever, going through his body, we've never seen him that angry. And, you know, it's just a reminder, like your children, I guess, will bring that out of you. Neither one of you, neither one of them knew they had that in them until the moment presented itself. Well, and also where the episode ends with Barry's realization that Cicada's a father and maybe that that's a way in, the idea that, you know, I think that occurred to Barry because he was fully prepared to quite possibly kill Cicada, yeah, right. effectively in defense of his daughter, and that's just what he's doing. Sort of as well. see, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you start to see more. Of, he starts to see more of himself in the villain. Which okay, maybe there's another way to approach this. Yeah, I like when that line is blurred too. When it's like yeah. you know, there's more of a gray area with what's good and what's bad. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Barry really has been kind of such a squeaky clean. Yeah, you're telling Ralph, you know, yeah. like it's always like everybody's squeaky clean, you know. Yeah. You know what's great about this episode? I don't know if you guys noticed in the warehouse when he's talking to Cecile, and then a uh, few other times when he was confronted with Cicada, uh, background lighting of green and red, uh, throwback to El- uh, Elseworlds. Uh, El- yeah, with uh, when he was like con- confronting being uh, Arrow and having to kill. And so there's literally this scene when he's like fuming with Cecile yeah. and like there's green on one side, red on the other, arrow and the flash, like what is he going to do? Yeah. I don't know if that was like intentional. Symbolism. It's Symbolism, great. but it's it was, great. It was yeah. I saw that and I was just like, whoa, yeah, super cool. am I just too deep? Yeah. No, like we it. heard that he were he was because of his time with Arrow was going to have a little bit of that darkness in him a bit more. I think we saw that for sure in um, in this episode particularly. Are we going to see that anger kind of stick with him throughout the season, or is that like a one-and-done type thing? Uh, Well, from... From what I understand of it, it's ba- it, I, it basically brings him to that place of love where he... Not that place of love, that's a, not the right way to put it, but just makes him realize how much Nora means to him and I think have more empathy for... Go back to having more empathy for for a villain, which I think is a good quality, but I think yeah. something that certainly Ralph would say he takes too far. I mean, I was the one last year being like, let's just kill DeVoe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, this is crazy. I have a gun, let's shoot. <laughs> yeah, let's just go to my glove kill, box. Yeah. I'll do exactly. this for right now. Yeah. That, exactly. That's the weird thing about this tonight's episode, though, is that, like, um, Barry and The Flash is... He shows how much of a, a hero of heroes that he is, yeah. where, like, he is looking out for all these bad people, and it kind of threw me for loop when he is like, let's round up all these people and um, save them even though they're horrible criminals. Mm -hmm. But yet he can't see that with Cicada and he wants to kill Cicada. And it's just this line of like, are you going to be uh, a Batman? Or are you going to be like a Superman? Like, yeah. what, what do you stand for? Kind well, of. Thing. Why, Wait, why are you Batman doing doesn't it, you know? kill. Batman doesn't kill, but he's brutal. Well, he did in. Uh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, that's. A <laughs> <laughs> well, Superman's. You know. I just use those two because it's like light and night, yeah. night and dark. It's the polar opposites. Mm. Well, then also Cecile made a good point. Like those criminals served their time already. So yeah, homegirls exactly. working in a bar. Somebody like they've moved on. So I do think. But are they going to be on parole? Is there like a special metahuman identity change parole? Right. Something. But I, I don't know. Is there? But <laughs> I think that also kind of brought into. I mean, there were some themes, and I kind of wrote down X Men when they were talking mm-hmm. about like metahuman rights. Totally. You know, where it was just mm-hmm. this idea of you know they deserve protection too. Why hasn't that been passed? There's policies. There's government. These people are citizens. I mean. Just like any citizen would come out of jail and have some type of a chance to be reformed, why is there some idea that 
a meta human comes out and they're just going to be super villain for I mean yes that is usually it's how it goes but <laughs> we've seen and even in the last episode there was this theme of redemption yeah. going on so I think you know and maybe that might be more pronounced as the season goes on because there seems to be lines in the sand with certain we saw that with Jonesy and stuff of this question of where do the meta humans fit into this world yeah and I like exploring that thing a lot that you say the X-Men idea like I like the idea of being like with this whole group of people and there's more and more and more of them what are they going to do and where are they coming from and are they all bad are they all good you know maybe they're bad because when they get out of Iron Heights or they get out of prison there's nothing for them to do except yeah. be branded a horrible person you yeah. know, there's, there's no due process there's no you know wh- where are their no redemption their rights yeah, yeah exactly is there a path for that and mm-hmm. I think we sort of saw a little bit, bit of that in this episode which I liked was the idea of I think we saw it with Norvok where it was like when there was a chance to maybe be have a different path and go a different way he took advantage of that right yeah I like that yeah so obviously you guys plan to take them, you know, put them in witness protection. What was it like filming that scene with all of the different actors playing all these different types of metas? You said it was really cold that night that you guys the, were... The scene, the helicopter stretch scene where I, I start pulling everybody up, that was so cold. Every, like everybody had the flu, it felt like. So I was trying to not get the flu. Because it happens when we're shooting in Vancouver a lot, like around January. like around This is November, I think. In November, everybody starts getting sick. And you try not to get sick. And then they have these two massive... I mean, 25 foot tall fans on either side of us to make the helicopter win. Yeah. Just blowing at us <laughs> like this. Ah. And water. And like water going into it. So cold water. And it was, you know, like 40 degrees outside. Jeez. So we had to do that over and over and over again. And all of us were like, <laughs> 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 but it was fun to shoot. I mean, I knew it was going to look super cool when they did it, but it was, it was a bit of a tough one to shoot. But. Mm. I've had much tougher than that. I mean, it was an easy day, all things considered, but cold. Cold. <laughs> cold. Yeah. Did you have something? Oh, no. I was, there wasn't, yeah, no. Okay, then I have, I have a quick question. So, how does normal, like, how do you normally film the, like, Ralph? I was just about that. The last game is, see, obviously you don't stretch like that. I do just, like, <laughs> parts, parts of me kind of do, yeah, parts, parts of me kind of do, but, um... <clears throat> We do it in all sorts of different ways, and I get that question a lot. There's a lot of VFX, but there's also a lot of practical stuff. Even with camera moves and stuff like that, there's also sometimes it's just me doing stuff that I really feel when I'm driving home from work because it's like <laughs> bending a certain way and being yeah. like, okay, there it is. Um, I've been on wires to do it. I've had to contort and bend and do certain things. Some of it's just weird stuff that I can do with my face naturally, which is like a gift, I guess. <laughs> um, so it's just all sorts of different things that come into it, but a lot of it's VFX, and that stuff is, you know, you have to do things specifically in a certain way every single time the same way over and over again. Mm. Um, so that becomes a lot of work, and they do a great job with it. They yeah. They make it all work. I was going to say, it looks cool. It, like, it hurts to watch sometimes. I'm like, I don't think bodies should do that. My, <laughs> my favorite VFX shot that I saw this season was, I think it was episode five, it was Iris and Barry, and he's like, I want to try something I saw in a comic book, and he did the Spider-Man thing through the... Yeah, yeah. With, with that was cool. episode, with Ragdoll, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. With the episode with Ragdoll, with the guy who could actually contorted into the... That movie. was awesome. But like that swinging so through the city, I loved that sequence, and I thought they did a great, great job with that. I thought it looked like something from a movie. It was so cool. Yeah, that was literally the coolest. I want to talk about the fight that went down between Cicada yes. and Barry and Cicada and Killer Frost, because I know people in the chat are going off about it. Um, do we think the Flash can fight? Yeah, I think he can fight. Like, I, I <laughs> well, think, no, no, you don't mean, you don't mean the Allen. Flash, you mean Barry Allen. Barry yes. Allen, yeah. Do we think Barry Allen can throw hands without the speed Not runs? Barry Allen, I don't think. Do you think that supports your I argument, really, I Jamie. think that, um, <laughs> okay, so I heard this story back in the day, and I don't know if it's true or not, but this woman's child got hit by a car, and I think she was with her adrenaline. She was able to lift the car off the child. Yeah. yeah so I feel yeah. like right, Barry Allen can fight because you know he had some adrenaline behind it. But we're it. talking about like technical stuff. Right? Well, I mean, you're able to do things that you don't know you're able to do until you start doing it when you're pissed. I That's also, just my. Take I write on. it off to like experience. For years, he's been fighting all of these people. Yes, as the Flash. Yes, with superpower. But like, you're gonna pick up stuff. Yeah. Away. yeah absolutely. Like you're not gonna be like any of us just walking off the street fighting like an MMA guy or something like that. It's, and Cicada, it's like, how trained is he? He's not he's not Oliver Queen, right? Yeah. True. Like, he's right. obviously skilled and has skill and everything like that, but he's kind of like a brawler, right? Yeah. Like a bar fight. Yeah. yeah. He's not fighting. Like, if he did that to Oliver Queen, we'd all be like, yeah, that's probably never, ever, ever going to happen. That's true. <laughs> Barry also retains some of the things that he had when he was Oliver Queen. So, 
like I'm seeing that now, especially yeah, t- in tonight, point. where he did know how to like take a block and, and a punch and whatnot and fl- throw it a certain way, as opposed to if he was just like running around him speed punching, you know. That's a really yeah, so, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. he's not doing that. He's actually like yeah. defending himself. That's a really this, great point, yeah, though. So. He picked that up in Elseworlds, and like he's mm. kept that in. Yeah. That's great. I think this was one of my favorite fights that we've seen from good. Barry. Like, not necessarily The Flash, but Barry. Actually, no, and The Flash. I just thought it was, like, badass. Even, like, when he, you know, slowed it down for a minute, he's just, like, mean mugging him. That was oh, great. it's so cool that how they great. choose. I love how it they... It was like, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like... It's great how the creators, they... they either tend to uh, decide to give us like, oh, um, Barry will be really fast and, and you'll see the bad guy get hurt. Or like now, lately in this season, we're getting a lot of seeing Barry's side of it. Like where- I love the, it. The flat, what does he call it? Flash time? Or, yeah, flash time. Yeah, flash time. We're getting to see more of that. And it, they're just like frozen. It's just like, oh, you could do so much to that person. So good. I agree. So Officer Jones um, is, which great last name. Um, he, <laughs> he's not feeling metas. He's not down with it. Are we gonna see more like, regular civilians start to have problems with metas? Is that going to be like a yes, thing? Yes, you will see a little bit more of that. And okay. I, I can't say too much about that, but you will see more of that. People will have... So It blurs the line. Again, it yeah. blurs the line between what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad. Interesting. I'm interested to see that just because Supergirl kind of played with that. With they the, still are a little yeah, bit. Yeah, with the alien, like, you know, anti-aliens thing. So I think it'd be cool to see it in the meta sense. Especially because, I don't know, I feel like... Um, Century, like I don't know. I feel like your city is a little bit more friendlier than like the super. Yeah, world. it's a happier spot. Yeah, in Central. Yeah. So I'm interested to see like that play out. But um, let's I thought, talk. I was okay. actually going to say I thought with um, they did give a reference sort of to, to that about that blurred line with uh, pick. Peekaboo, mm-hmm. who was saying when she was telling Barry, "What you gonna put me back into your the jail cell mm-hmm. yeah. that you guys have?" Like that's that blurred line again because we were talking about like they have this place where they were putting people away sure. without any trials or anything, and yeah. it's just like who does? Yeah, that? no due process. Yeah. At, no toilet from what yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, we found out there is a toilet. I know, but when I when I started, I was like, <laughs> that was our number one question. <laughs> yeah, Always. Uh, and they were like, "Yeah, people talk about that all the time." So I was like, "Okay, okay, people are asking the right questions, right?" right? Like we're Side note, a question that we've had for literally seasons now. Where is Star Labs security? Yes. Like, why can Everyone can just break it. Everyone can just, just walk, walk right, right up in there. Felicity said that last year, didn't she? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> what, what is episodes, happening? Like, Where is, yeah, I don't know. I guess they have, like, you know, Front Point or, or ADT or something like that. <laughs> I'm to pay the bill, maybe. <laughs> at this point, I almost don't want to see there ever be any type of, like, you have to keep it going at this point. There can't be. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has to just be able to walk right in. Um, the Sher- Sherlock and Nora situation. Mm-hmm. He is getting on her tail. He figures out that there is like there has to be a mastermind because there's two um, different handwriting. Different. That was a great shot at the end. So good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. great yeah. Shot. You all, you guys looked down. You didn't see that, did you? What? You're all writing. Look down. Writing I saw down. It. You saw oh, it? you're crazy. There's the reflection. Yeah. reflection. Tom's reflection. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I saw everyone looking down. I was like, look up. Yeah. Look yeah. Up. yeah. No, no, no. I saw that. Is how does Ralph feel about Nora? Because I, I feel like he likes her, but it kind of seems like he's a little he, questioning. He loves Nora. I mean, there's nothing not to love, but he knows there's more there than what's going on. He mm. absolutely knows there's more there. And he's known that from, from early on. And mm. we'll explore that a little bit more. He knows there's just something off there, mm. you know? But he loves Barry, you know? Like, he really does love Barry and Iris and the whole group. So he's not going to, you know, derail that. I don't, I'm interested. I don't know. There's just like so, you guys are setting up so much for the season right now that I'm just like, I don't even know. His, Ralph is in, you know, this is his family now. He didn't have a family. He has a family. It's, it's Team Flash and that's what he's going to protect more than anything. And Nora's part of that. She's included in that. And I feel like with Ralph, you always deliver what you need to say with like, softness and compassion so i could never see ralph like flipping out or i mean sherlock is not being that hard but i don't i couldn't see ralph being even as hard as sherlock on nora yeah no probably not ralph's all hard i mean he's got a lot yeah he's got a huge heart someone in the chat actually asked and i think we mentioned it um in uh in the beginning of the season how we were just talking about your powers ralph's powers but we've seen a a reemergence more of his uh detective skills yeah a bit more which i really liked because i mean one of the things of just playing i think it's a a great way to get the layers of the character a little bit outside of his powers have you enjoyed that a bit more the whole back and forth with sherlock and that was one of the things that i wanted right away like when i first came in it was like in the comics he's you know second I think only to Batman in terms yeah. of being a detective in DC Comics he's brilliant and that really like 
That's kind of his superpower, you know, at least one of them. That's like his other main superpower is the deductive reasoning, whatever you want to call it. And when I came on, I was like, cool, let's do that. And they're like, wait, we have this idea. We want to set this up, bring this guy through this whole journey last year to bring him from, you know, the not so good Ralphie and the jackass Ralphie and then bring him back and have this whole thing. And now we're starting to get into that more. And mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying that. Like, I think it was episode four where we did some mm -hmm. of that and me and Tom worked together yeah. and that was super fun. And I'm always down for that. Like, I want more and more and more of that. And there is more of that coming, too. Awesome. Um, I love that. Like, even tonight, the little thing where mm -hmm. Sherlock was, like, figuring out, oh, the web on the guy's neck. And I was like, oh, that's this. Oh, that's that. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing that side of the character, too. Um, it fleshes him out way more. It brings all these layers into it. So when the chat was asking, um, has there been any different about portraying Ralph this season compared to season four? No, for me, it's a natural progression of, like, he's because to me, he still feels like the same Ralph. He's just, you know... He's just grown up. Yeah. You know? And I like that. Yeah, I think he like learned a lot in last season in, in potentially actually dying. Yeah, uh, and that was, well, he did die. Yeah, he, he did was like, die. And that was the whole plan, was like to bring him through this thing. And, and when he died, and we talked about this when he died, I was like, you know, he, he was in there for, I, I don't know, a few weeks, five weeks for the team. But for him, he was in there for far, far, far longer than yeah. that. But we, we didn't put that in the script. We talked about like a Groundhog Day aspect where mm. he was in DeVoe's mind for oh, like man. years and years and years and years. Wow, and years. that's insane. Yeah, that was the whole thing. Like he years. cooked in that thing for years. That's one of the things we talked about. And we had a whole avenue we were going to do where he was going to have like a beard and like all this stuff. And we're going to like cast away. We're going to like yeah. do that whole thing. But I kept that in the portrayal where it was like that's he's been cooking in there for years. It's like this guy that was a jackass. You haven't seen him for six years. And you're like, hmm. oh, you're still you. But like you really grew up. Yeah. And that was like the slow cooker he went through. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I was listening to a podcast you were on uh, today and you told the story of, oh, God, what was it? Uh, the, what was it? It was like the, your most recent interview, I think, that you've done. Was but it you were with Travis? I th no, not with Travis. ADHD? But you're talking about your first thought or your audition with the I Flash. I think it was ADHD with yes. Travis Mill. Yeah, yes, Travis. Is, okay, so can you just like tell the people, like, because I thought it was a really funny story, if you could just share. So every, <laughs> I feel like a lot of actors say this when they get a, a great part. They're like, oh, I thought it was a terrible audition. This audition for this role was, I walked out of there thinking, truly, I, I, it was the worst audition I'd ever given. <laughs> they had changed my time, my audition time. They'd brought it earlier, earlier in the day. No problem. I got there 20, 30 minutes early, like I always try to do and usually do. Because um, you want some time to, like, you know, go to the bathroom, whatever. Like, do your thing, review your lines, all that stuff. Just be settled. And I got to the gate, security gate, and the guy's like, we don't have you on the list. Oh, my God. And my audition's in, like, 45 minutes. I'm like... Okay. And this is with producers. This is with everybody. I'm going right to that, and I've, you've got to be on it. You want to nail it. I'm like, okay, um, cool, no problem. What do I do? He's like, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe pull over and call your agent. <laughs> and I'm like, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> like pulling over, like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Call my agent. He's like, let me call. I'm sitting there five minutes, ten minutes. I text him. He's like, I'm on it. I'm figuring it out right now. Fifteen minutes go by. Ten minutes go by. I finally get in and I park my car and it's six minutes until my audition and I need, like I've been panicking so I need time to like review my lines, get back into it. I have like a monologue sort of thing to do. I need to refresh it so I spent a few minutes. And then I go upstairs, my appointment was at 4 p.m. I stepped out of the elevator at 4.01 p.m. I'm like, whatever, no huge deal, it'll be fine. I go into the audition room where almost always there's various other actors waiting that are auditioning for the same part, empty. Hmm. And since I've been waiting at the gate, and I drank coffee, and I drank water, uh. I'm about to burst. Mm. Like, I am just about to explode. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. Casting assistant pops her head out and goes, um, are you ready? <laughs> of course. Uh. And I, I remember this distinctly. I go, ah, I was just going to hop into the restroom real quick, if that's okay. She goes, well, you're the last mm. one in there waiting. <laughs> And oh she wasn't gosh. swarmy about it. She was like, oh, okay, but just you're the last one. And they're, and they're waiting. And I'm like, great. These people hate me. I kept <laughs> them waiting. There's nobody else there. They've probably been up there for 10 minutes waiting for me. They have 5,000 things oh. to do. And very full bladder. I was like, wow. I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. It's great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You pulled a Joey. Yeah. Brother, right? I was like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I'm totally ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> And just went in and talked with everybody and then did the scene and then talked a little more and walked out and was like, they hated me. <laughs> they hated me. Called my agent. I was like, you've got to try to sort this out for me because I, I am ruined. I was like, I am absolutely ruined. I thought it was so, you know, because you're just not feeling in it. But the thing about auditioning is it's not about uh, 
it's not always about your experience. It's just about what the whole thing is and the other, what the other people are experiencing. And then it was a few days later, they're like, hey, they want to meet with you and talk about it. I was like, you sure they got the right guy? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just went on from there. But I truly, it was like that experience. You know, you're late. And yeah. And it makes you more late. So mm. And you just don't feel on it. You don't feel you, you know? We are lucky that they picked you. Yeah. I don't think we could. I'm, I'm very lucky. I don't think I could see another. I feel like you are Ralph. Like, it wouldn't make yeah. sense for anybody else. It's really fun for me. I like the part a lot. Did you pay attention to um, online what they were saying when you were first on? Or were you not just really. kind of like, I'm going to avoid no, all of this? No, not really. I mean, to... That would kind of taint things. And mm-hmm. like, that, I think that's really hard for any actor. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Anybody who's doing this kind of stuff kind of, kind of has You never story. read the comments. <laughs> I mean, I have like, here and there. No, as an like, actor, don't, just don't read the comments. Yeah, I just stay away from that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, whatever, you know, everybody it's, has an opinion. Exactly. Yeah. They're like something else, you know? Yeah. Everybody's got them. <laughs> <laughs> Billie Jean Girl in the chat wants to know, who is someone you wish you had more scenes with? Uh, Probably Tom. Actually, no, Nora. I love working with Tom. I've had some with Tom. I, I want... I want to do some stuff with Jessica Parker Kennedy. Mm. Um, I, we get along really well, and I love her, and I would love to see Ralph and Nora together. I think it'd be really fun. She's so versatile, too, because mm-hmm. she plays this part, and it's, like, so young in mind. And then she was also on a show, I believe, Black Cells. Yeah. And it was totally just kind of, <laughs> that show was, like, a totally, like, 180 from The she Flash. She was, like, a brothel owner. Yeah. That show, wasn't and, she? yeah, she's, yeah. like, a brothel owner. And I was just, like, and then I saw that she, I was, like, so they're going to have Nora sort of have an edge. And then she just, so I'm, like, wow, this is this is versatility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's an incredible Acting. actress. Yeah. <laughs> um, what other DC characters would you like to see come through on The Flash? Like, well, Sue, I mean, I, Sue Dibney, I sort of have to say that, Sue Dibney. I haven't thought about who I would like to see in the world of The Flash. I haven't thought extensively about that. Um, and then there's something that I actually can't say. <laughs> <laughs> ah. um, say if you weren't playing Ralph, is there another character on the show, gender aside, that you would be like, they'd be fun to play? Or someone's power that you would like think would be fun to kind of play around with. Well, I mean, The Flash has an amazing power. Like, I love that power. I think, I really like the role of Caitlin in Killer Frost. Like, that's a really, really mm. fun one. That would be a fun one to try on. I would Dude. like that a lot. We should do an episode where, like, everybody's swap. Everyone's yeah. switching yeah. powers. Yeah. Yeah. That'd, That'd be, be so cool. great. That'd be great. Yeah. I love that. Do you guys have any questions while I look through the fan questions? Um, I think somebody in the chat asked, uh, we nixed shipping you and Caitlin, but we, what about you and Killer Frost? I mean, I think that kind of works. Like, yeah. yeah. I think, Ooh, I think yeah, that's yeah. more along the lines of, of what would actually happen than Ralph and Caitlin. Okay. But I don't think it would last. No. That's like, you know. We get more of Caitlin anyway than Killer Frost. So. Yeah. yeah. That would not last. It'd be combustible be. in terms of, they probably want to kill each other after a bit, <laughs> yeah. maybe. I'm more worried about Ralph than Killer Frost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then really quick before we hop into news and gossip and predictions, um, I saw that you were walking a bunch of dogs the other day yeah. in the rain, um, and you do like a lot of volunteer work with... I do, as much as I can, yeah. Your animal love the is awesome. Yeah, right? yeah the- as much as I can. <laughs> the sweatshirt you got going on already. Yeah, well, and the no, t-shirt. I, just, I, lo- I love dogs more than anything in the world, um, and whenever I can, I'm at the shelter in South LA volunteering, and... You know, we need help. Like, nobody comes down there. Mm-hmm. Um, people go to the other shelters, and they have tons of volunteers, and we're the biggest one in the city. There's almost 400 dogs there, and uh, really nobody comes to help. Huh. Is there a way that people who aren't in Los Angeles can, like, help or donate or anything like that? So when people ask me this question, what I say to them is, like, it's great to want to reach out to the South L.A. and that community and the dogs from that community, mm-hmm. but I guarantee you, no matter where you are, it's probably mm-hmm. happening around the corner for you, and you don't realize it. it. Go mm-hmm. to your local, shel- local shelter, see what it's about, get involved. There's a million things to do over there. It doesn't have to be, like, walking large dogs like we're doing. Uh, it can be anything. Clean rabbit cages, anything. Yeah. Cool. One mm-hmm. of the great things that I think in California, the they just uh, mm-hmm. passed the idea of like uh, not being able to having the the pet shops having to get animals from the rescues from yeah. the shelters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which yeah, is yeah. I think is really great. Yeah, it's a great step. In the yeah. Right yeah. All right. Do we want to hop into news and gossip? Sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so the Flash showrunner explains why Tom Cavanaugh is back as Reverse Flash. As the, you know, online there were some people who were kind of questioning why is it Tom's face and not mm. the original's uh, face, uh, face, Matt Lesher. Lesher. 
Sorry. Um, we've seen the return of Revenge Flash on the show, yet some fans are wondering why Tom. Um, so t- uh, our showrunner Todd Helbing explained recently to TV Line that the whole theme of the season is legacy. So it felt more applicable in a way that we introduced Reverse Flash as Wells for it to play out the way with Tom. And then he was a bit more ominous in saying that if you plot out the Thawne timeline, I think there's a version of this online somewhere. It makes more sense logically in a weird time travel way. So I guess it'll make more sense in the future (laughs) episodes why it's Tom's face and not um, Matt's face, which was something that was on a lot of fans' question, um, you know, minds when we first saw Reverse Flash make an emergence. And then on a highlight of something a little bit deeper in Pop Sugar, there's an awesome article about Candace Patton showcasing how the Flash. Uh, leading lady has, you know, changed, helped change the game when it comes to representation Mm -hmm. that you can find on the Pop Sugar website where she talks about her role as Iris five years later and how, you know, in a way that it paved the way for other um, actresses of color to play more leading roles in the comic book live action verse, which we weren't seeing as much before Iris West came about. So that's a really great um, little tidbit there. And lastly... There's a big news thing. A cast member of The Flash will be separ- celebrating their birthday this Friday. No. Yes. <laughs> and it's Hartley Sawyer. Oh my gosh, guys. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Where's the happy birthday techno remix? Yes, we need the techno to, remix. Yes, we do. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, I keep forgetting it's my birthday. I'm not, I'm not a huge, huge birthday guy. Like, I like, you know, I like it, but you know. <laughs> I like staying alive. I'm getting old. As you, get, as you get older, it's like, hey, yeah. I'm Another still year. closer to Social Security. So. <laughs> well, yes. Happy early birthday. Do you have any fun plans or anything? I'm a very, like, no plan plan guy. Uh, when, when I carve out my time, I want to wake up in the morning and be like, you know what? It's going to be this. And I'm sure you'll probably see it on social media, whatever I decide to do. I okay, did. cool. Anything from skydiving to napping all day. Oh, yes. <laughs> the wide spectrum. Sounds. Yeah. That's how I play. That's how I live my life. You live and lose. Well, you guys, let's hop into predictions. Let's do it. I bet I can get some. now. <laughs> Maybe we should, yeah. Well, what are your predictions? Yeah, we'll start with you. I like my job a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping my job. That's right. a good prediction. Um, Zach, take it away. Um, well, we have uh, in the previews a little bit of an Inception type uh, episode coming up, which is kind of cool. I think we are going to get a little bit more um, hinted towards Reverse Flash. I mean, we got that little scene really quick where Barry sees him, and I think maybe um, tables will turn a little bit, and Nora has some explaining to do. Yeah, I definitely like that prediction of Nora having explaining to do. She got some explaining. She got some explaining to do. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know if there'll be time just because of the way the preview looked, but maybe like, um, you know, Sherlock will get closer to what's going on with Nora and it'll be revealed to somebody. I don't, you know, whether Ralph ends up helping or he slips and tells Iris something. I just see something, a step going further with what Sherlock has found out about Nora. But I'm really excited about that um, next episode. Other than that. Yeah, um, I think, well, mine's, I, I usually give more hope than prediction. <laughs> and my hope is that we find a little bit more about. I'm taking notes. <laughs> yes, please do. We find out a bit more about, you know, Barry, you know, disappearing in Speed Force. Because once again, that was brought up and we don't seem to be working to. I mean, I know we got to get to Kea, but it's like, what happens? Yeah. Like, are we going to start dealing with that? I, I want to start dealing with that. Mm. I. <laughs> And Thank you. He's taking notes, y'all. I am predicting <laughs> slash hoping that we kind of find out we get to see Iris in the future. Yes, yeah. Nora's memories. So I want to mm, see interesting. why <laughs> there there was beef in the beginning. I want to know why Nora was like a little pressed by her mom when she first came around. I want to see you know. That well, you know the showrunner. He said that we might be seeing her. Yeah, yeah. I want it next episode though. Yes, mm. could Hear be. That. Could not be. Could not be. But <laughs> and why she looks exactly the same. Like I just feel like Iris would just stay so like. They put like a keep the glow. Keep the glow. Yeah. Like single gray. Single gray hair, like Nancy from Freddy Krueger. That's how Candace is probably gonna age too. Exactly. She's gonna have a great glow about her. She's just not gonna age. Twenty five years from now. I will accept however they choose to age her. Amen. Like that's right. That makes sense. That makes that's accurate. That's comic book accurate. 
Well, we want to thank you so much. Thank you for having me. For yeah. Yeah. Quite a pleasure. <laughs> Do it um, again. Yes. yes. Yeah. Anytime. Where yeah. can the people keep up with you? Uh, Instagram and Twitter is at Hartley Sawyer, uh, spelled like Hartley Sawyer. Perfect. It's well, mostly you... dogs a lot of the time, but <laughs> a lot of flash stuff too. We love dogs. Um, until next time, guys, I'm your girl, Drew Jones. You guys can find me on all the things at OK Drew J. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Miss Chauncey KR and also on Rotten Tomatoes as I'm an official film and TV critic over there. Yes, and you can find me on Instagram at Jamie Alexander. And guys, my name is Zach Silverman. You can find me all across social media at Zach with a CH Silverman too. All right, guys, we'll see you all next week. All right, bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menounos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com to check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.